Good morning. It's back to work from home, at least in Delhi, uh, this time because of the air pollution emergency. Thanks to the COVID lockdown experiences, this has not really come as a shock. It's been seen largely as a temporary disruption for all those who had started their back to office routines. Welcome to this special web discussion where we will discuss the future of hybrid workplaces now that we are coming out of the restrictions imposed during the lo uh, lockdown following the pandemic. Now, despite the initial fears, remote work has proved to be a success for most companies with an improvement in productivity and lowering of cost. While back to office move has started for many companies, given the uncertainty about the recurrent COVID waves in different parts of the world, rethinking hybrid workplaces could perhaps prove to be premature. Many companies are reimagining where and how work will, will get done. While some sectors are no clo closer to giving up on the office due to the nature of the business, many are embracing the hybrid work model. So how are organizations preparing their workforce for a hybrid future? To discuss this, please welcome our panel of senior executives from India Inc. Please welcome Anisha Odeshi, Senior Director, Global Insurance and Risk, SIPLA, Mr. Dipankar Ghosh, CHRO, Bajaj Consumer Care, and Ritu Parnach Chakrabarty, Co-Founder and EVP, Team Lee Services. A quick introduction of our senior speakers today. Anisha Odeshi is the Senior Director, Global Insurance and Risk at CIPLA and has been with CIPLA for more than three decades. She is an experienced Director of Insurance with a demonstrated history of working in pharmaceutical industry. Her expertise include claims management, general insurance, risk management and business strategy. Anisha is a strong finance, is a strong finance professional with an LLB focused in law and insurance. Dipankar Ghosh uh, is an executive coach and a people transformation leader. He comes with over 20 years of diverse experience in leading FMCG automobile and services industry in the domains of HR business partnering, strategic human resources initiatives, talent assurance, uh, policy making and employee relations. He is a full pride fellow and an alumnus of Carnegie Mellon University. Ritu Banna Chakrabarty is an accomplished business leader with a multifaceted experience passion for excellence and a proven ability to drive growth at scale. She has business experience of more than 22 years and as co-founder and EVP of Team Lease, she has been instrumental in making Team Lease India's largest people supply chain company. Thank you all for joining us. Thanks, Anisha. Now, now Anisha uh, and the background, I want to start with you. Anisha, briefly tell us how CIPLA reacted to work from home. Now, despite the supply chain disruptions and the huge demand supply mismatch during the second wave, you've not really faced drug shortages. So has work from home been a resounding success for CIPLA? Uh, thank you, Anisha, for a lovely introduction and thank you for uh, this question. Actually speaking, we being a pharma company, we did not uh, sleep at home. Uh, we did have our plants working. We had our uh, little bit of disruption in case of uh, field staff. And uh, of course, our corporate uh, team was so working from home. So it has a, we had a combination of all three scenarios uh, for CIPLA. And uh, let me tell you, when the lockdown was announced, uh, uh, we were... Uh, mentally prepared to be in the field and also in the plant uh, so that uh, you know our covid uh, uh, war against covid should not get affected and um, you know plant manage management was uh, brought in action our hr teams as we always say hr and the uh, admin teams started working you know multiple uh, hours and uh, they kind of a created a strategy which would keep our plants working so that our supply chain was not disrupted and the flow in the market for the covid uh, uh, you know covid uh, kind of a uh, uh, material was uh, uh, not in short supply so that was attended to by our uh, teams in first uh, first instance secondly uh, the plan was drawn out for our um, uh, our field staff they were uh, they were asked to work from wherever they were 
and uh, they were not asked to move. So there was a strategy for them as well. And of course, for the corporate team, there was a strategy and our digital uh, footprints were strengthened to start uh, to start this initiative so that uh, you know we should not have uh, uh, any of the disruptions uh, in in the form of a cyber event or a uh, or a disruption in any other form so that uh, uh, the the work operations should not get affected and the strategy was drawn out in advance uh, so that was it from cipla and um, it worked well for us and okay. again uh, over a period of time uh, there was a this was a fluid strategy so that uh, as and when there was a requirement there was amendment were being done as well as there was uh, updation of the strategy was taken up all right anisha uh, dipankar same question to you um, how did bajaj consumer uh, deal with the outages of uh, the lockdown because uh, you know um, there's one thing about disruption you have to adapt but it still takes time when you get that shock so how did it work for you yeah thanks thanks anisha and thanks for the introduction uh, i think our experience had been very different from what um, uh, my 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 sipla colleague told uh, because we are not into drug or essential supply manufacturing in fact when the uh, pandemic had hit the first question was do we at all fall into essential category because we are into personal care product and will a hair hair shampoo or a hair oil or a skin cream at all is essential over a period of time we did realize actually that skin care is as much essential as something else that we thought but that's a different perspective uh, uh, april was a washout the plants were closed supply chain was severely disrupted and in the morning the first thing that you do is what do you do uh, including i knew we were actually doing a scenario analysis i remember last week of march we were doing a scenario analysis of zero revenue on q1 and that was kind of doomsday that we were probably preparing for and i think we quickly turned back by mid of april where we realized something that's going to happen beyond our control and something that we have to take charge of some of the adjustment that we did straight away is first we realized the vulnerability of our stakeholders both internal employees and external our channel partners so first let's create a safety net a safety net around no layoff announcement proactively that we did as a group at the beginning of april Uh, creating our wellness and med and, and, and a health um, uh, availability wherever possible, including proactive availability of 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 certain healthcare benefits. We actually did something very interesting. As an FMCG company, we reach out to five lakh retail outlet all across the company, all across the country. The small mom and pop shops where you go and buy your stuff, and. and they were the most vulnerable and they were our channel partners for last 50 years and their shops were shut or they were only open for limited hours we decided to actually touch base with those 5 lakh outlets on a weekly basis not talking about business but talking about their well-being their family what's happening in their surrounding and many of them probably got a call from the bajaj company in mumbai for the first time there were language barriers there were timing barriers there were people who couldn't understand who the hell is calling but over a period of time we realized that's a huge connect we created and suddenly the organizational internally who really were heavy around what to do we could clearly see we have built them through a common purpose a common purpose of striving in very difficult time rather than only surviving i think that was a big a big change mm-hmm. because you see pandemic took away the three most important levers of human resource which is time talent and energy people were complaining about time and time management the energy was sapping because being closeted at home working over zoom working over Uh, phone calls working late hours unearthly hours 
working on things which may not be so exciting at that point of time really have the energy down put and talent talent as you know there would be few who would always have those those flight mentality so the all the levers that you typically work upon were very challenged and we started taking slew of actions some of them which i just told and the mm-hmm. other thing that we also pulled up was the communication bit we realized that mm-hmm. whatever you do you have to reinforce that again and again and and listening to people communication listening and probably giving the right impetus where that is required i think those were the adjustment uh, did we thought through everything answer is no some of them were very reactive some of them we mm. felt just to be done without understanding the repercussion today mm. after 18 months when we look back we realize why we did which worked and which did not work mm. but yes there were a lot of meager reaction actions mm. and and some of them really worked well which also proves some of the business performance that we did in the subsequent quarters so yeah okay. it was a huge huge integration and realignment on the hr and new learnings as well uh, rituparna uh, you know uh, we've got uh, two um, perspectives from uh, you know an industry which is an essential one which was it now very briefly uh, you have an industry wide perspective while you know some people adapted adapted to digital quickly and you know um, performed better uh, there were some that had no choice say the travel industry you would be digital but you still wouldn't have any any way to go so what were the learnings in your mind through this period oh a lot of bun- i mean lot of learnings a bundle of learnings for corporate india for um, in, in a corporate india i think organizations in india and globally uh, i think learnings around uh, how do you approach employee engagement how, learnings around how do you adapt digitalizations learning a lot around um what kind of investment one should be making around learning and development so i think very mm-hmm. wide range of learnings we have gone through uh, some of them we probably were postponing 3 to 5 years down the line but suddenly they they were staring at our face and we had mm-hmm. to act on them right now challenges that certain industries faced i don't think uh, i don't think we can easily solve for them through mm-hmm. through digital interventions or through any other magic or miracle the the agony that the hospitality industry has gone through the aviation industry lifestyle industry um actually many uh, some of them have started reviving some are still struggling i don't think uh, they planned for it i don't think there is a recipe to kind of overcome some of those challenges because for example in hospitality and travel if people don't travel there is no business no matter what mm. you do mm. Uh, and i have seen them of course digital adoption even in that sector over the last one year has improved but until unless people show up in your properties you can't really do much about it but having mm. said that i think uh, one of the biggest learning that i have seen uh, corporate india um, actually imbibing has been the quick adoption of uh, digital in all aspects now that cuts across in uh, manufacturing companies engineering companies the traditional sectors which were hesitant to leverage technology or digitalizations now were compelled and forced to it has suddenly become a boardroom priority which so far were not the case um i think the investments in learning and how you can look at hybrid models to be able to leverage to keep your employees connected engaged uh, skilled um and 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 the works of course there is a lot of innovation that has happened around collaboration tools around data security well i can go on so i would prefer to give it more to my other esteemed panelists so sure. and this is just a reminder to everyone who's logged in we will be taking questions uh, from the audience towards the close of this discussion towards the end of the discussion but do feel free to type in your questions as and when they come to your mind don't wait towards <laughs> the end of the discussion if something comes to your mind and you have a question just type it in now there're going to be three types of companies in the future some may we'll see return to office companies some will be fully remote companies and some will be hybrid workforce companies so do companies then um, plan to change their hr policies to uh, in order to adapt to the new normal given that normal way of working is going to be very different for each organization you know it's not one size fits all so what i want to know from you uh, first uh, anisha is that uh, will employees have a voice in choosing their flexibility 
um, and their preferred days to work from office or work from home. What do you think is going to be like in the future and what kind of changes will uh, the HR policies see? We have already seen that uh, happening because uh, our, let me tell you from the beginning again, because uh, from, the, from the day one, uh, our HR was very, very active in taking a decision or rather, you know, getting everybody on board uh, by way of uh, creating a COVID task force because that was a need of an hour. And, uh, you know, in that COVID task force, we arranged for so many things for our employees, our all the stakeholders who were connecting with us, their families, and uh, so on and so forth. And there was a very important thing that was coming out was engagement with employees. Like, you know, first of all, to provide them with uh, the support that they, they or their family needed. And the second thing was to get in touch with them and keep in touch with them so that they will uh, not get affected because of any other reason like you know mental uh, wellness was one of the key problems that all the industries saw be it uh, they were essential services or they were uh, not essential services so that was the case that we had realized that we had to keep in touch with people and our uh, all the uh, all the employees as well as their the other stakeholders and their families so uh, this was uh, one thing that was taken care Second thing, uh, which was uh, which was very much uh, our, which is our DNA, like caring for life is our uh, statement, you know, uh, our motto statement, and um, that was uh, you know following that we we created that kind of an ecosystem which was conducive for working um, at uh, office or working from home or uh, working from uh, you know. Uh, some far away places so uh, that was uh, given importance uh, in the beginning and all the people uh, there was a survey which was uh, conducted by uh, internal uh, stakeholders and uh, the opinion was asked from employees as to how they would like to go about when the uh, things uh, uh, how are where how are they even today you know when we open our computers uh, or a laptop in a, uh, on a for, a, for working uh, we first question that we are being asked is how are you feeling today are you do you need any help do you need any assistance are you feeling all right are you feeling good bad amazing you know that is a question that we are being asked so we we feel that you know somebody is there to ask us and somebody is really caring for us the second thing was, uh, you know, we it was a, always a very ours is a very very agile organization and proactive organization. So all the stuff that was related to keeping the employee wellness in place was taken up. All the all the actions that were required, and maybe uh, you know, being a, a pharma industry or a, a life sciences industry. It is in our DNA to take care of people, human lives. No, so that's that very heartening, Anisha, that uh, taking care of employees has been priority for Sipta. My question really is what happens in the future? Is it going to be a hybrid model for Sipta? Uh, will employees have a say? It's very nice that you care about them. Will they have a say in how yes. many days they work it is always, from office? It has always been the case that employees are taken, employees' opinion are taken into consideration for, uh, for the for the future of uh, work and uh, we we are uh, we, our uh, management is committed that you know hybrid is the way forward uh, hybrid work station so we we have been given that uh, option to work for from office any two days in a week um, and uh, you know three days are being given so that like you know for me if i can give an example of mm -hmm. our uh, department uh, finance so uh, you know we can come two days from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, any two days we can be in the office and rest of the days we can be at home. Okay, we could be working from home. So that is the, uh, that is the opinion or that was the uh, you know mandate given to us by our management, but it was taken after this was this particular decision was taken after the uh, after taking into consideration all the employees almost or uh, you know almost all the employees were considered before uh, giving. Okay. This, 
So a survey was done and perhaps the best possible solution was uh, uh, adopted by CIPLA. Uh, Dipankar, uh, for your organization, what is it going to be like in the future? And what kind of changes would you have to bring about in HR policy? And there is this flexibility for employees, uh, but uh, you also want some ground rules, right? So could you tell us what is your plan and what about um, those uh, employees that actually don't have a choice about, you know, working from home, especially if they're if they are front uh, facing or client facing or sales personnel, then then what are the rules? Sure. So first answer candid is we have done many things in the last few months to adapt to this new buzz of hybrid working model, including change your policies. And I will I can rant down all of them one by one. But if you really ask me what the future hold, my answer is I don't know. Uh, because we would be very smart in going for a volte face the moment situation is different. It's now in to talk about hybrid. Is it going to stand the test of time? Very frankly, I don't know because uh, we have seen similar kind of change of stand of some of the largest IT companies in India who last year said we are we are going completely work from home and now calling back and Rituparna is already laughing. So that's what we we trained business professionals are so <clears throat> uh, yeah so we have right now what we have coined our term we are saying you need to come less frequently at a re reduced frequency but at a defined frequency which means you can come three days a week you can choose your day uh, you have flexi work you have work from home you have an on-call medical counselor we are actually in mumbai providing people extra gratis to commute through taxi or auto rickshaw so that you don't need to catch a train uh, at least at a particular till up to a particular level we are providing that to all employees in in mumbai city uh, we have actually taken additional office space because our seating capacity is now 50 percent in our normal office we have done all of that have we done anything for the sales and the plant on this fact of the matter is no. What we have actually done in, in Liu is probably we have increased health coverage. We have provided much more hygiene kits. We have provided with much more holidays. But have we told them that you don't need to go to the to the distributor point to meet the distributor? Answer is no. Can I plant people uh, will not come to plant for production six days a week, three shifts a day? Answer is no. They have to do that. Have we heightened the the hygiene care, heightened the holidays and the leave policies, heightened the care giving part? Definitely yes. And I think we are very serious on that. But I just want to twist it a bit. Whatever we are doing today, be it work from home, flexi work, providing commutation support, hygiene, uh, 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 reduce frequency, these are things that companies had been doing much before pandemic in different levels. And some people were at, adapting that and have already done that in various scales. And some organization did not do that thinking, I don't need to be so evolved. And if you look at data now after one and a half year, companies who had already started adopting this before pandemic survived this, including companies in the mice category. They, they shifted their focus on the higher level things around employee development and something. And companies who thought that my day-to-day -day business is only that matters and I'm not going to add up, really struggled in the last one and a half year. And it's a lot to do with the leadership mindset. And we do have leaders across organization, across government, who still think, Sab ho gaya, third wave nahi aega, let's come back to normal life. And it's a struggle. It's a struggle for HR, it's a struggle for business leaderships, it's a struggle for the board, particularly for Indian companies to understand that you have once been caught on the wrong foot. Will you be again caught wrong foot again? Because signs are palpable that many companies are going to be again caught wrong foot. And that's my point. <clears throat> All right, Ritu Parna, what do you think? You know, um, uh, Anisha and Dipankar have brought out perspectives from their companies. Obviously, there is no one size fits all. 
but what do you do about employees who keep comparing with their friends and other employees in other companies and keep saying that i don't have this flexibility i don't have this uh, are they more realistic about the situation i think both anisha and the bankar made some extremely valid points uh, however um, the perspective that i'd like to bring to the table perspective of almost 80 90% of india uh, whose jobs are such that they can't be done from home so that's essentially is the reality and they became the most vulnerable during the pandemic because they are unable to do their job on the ground uh and you if if you make them sit at home it is an unviable proposition for employers and that made them extremely vulnerable and that's the reality even today so i think while we talk uh, and we we must talk about developing abilities of remote work we must not forget that a very um slim minority in india today can even think and have the luxury of talking about remote work hybrid work it's probably the privilege of those who are in knowledge driven sectors specialized product sectors uh they they they're probably in leadership roles um now here is given that we are talking about empathy at some point i mean this is a this is a anecdote shared recently by a friend of mine who is in a leadership role uh in an insurance company insurance was tagged as an essential services right um and hence most insurance companies had to work around the clock and trust me they were the ones who were overworked mm. given the tragedies we faced uh during the pandemic now uh here is a challenge that he faced by the leadership team mm. was a work from home which means they were in the safeties of their four walls mm. their entire operation services ground teams were working from offices exposed to the vulnerability but they had to do it because it's essential services the government mandate that you keep working um and hence the question that started cropping up within the organization is that while i'm working from office why are you hmm. working home now the thing is that this is a, this is a different level of differentiation the it poses a lot of questions at varying levels that um how do we adopt this now of course pandemic is behind us and now that we are looking towards the future service sectors manufacturing sectors um um e-commerce retail they will have to get back to doing work the way it was right um and i think hence we have to keep in perspective that while they're having the capability of remote remote work making the upfront down payments is important but we have to ensure how business can sustain and what is the right policy keeping in mind the nature of business that one operates in um also i think there were broader issues coming up with the remote work and hybrid work while we have been talking about employees um having options flexibilities the fact that they don't have to commute but side by side the vagaries of stress the vagaries of blurring work and home uh the vagaries of mental agony depression uh lack of uh, alignment with the business uh a sense of purpose there were many people who were onboarded during the pandemic who have no alignment with the organization because they were hired virtually they were onboarded virtually they continued working virtually and the risk of disengagement risk of attrition all of this starts spiking up so i think this is a much more complex problem than one has thought and like the per set i think it's premature and maybe tardly foolish right now to dictate how the future will look like but we are humans we have to remind ourselves we are not robots social capital is important for us and sitting at home we don't build social capital right uh technology is one of the major benefactors from the compulsion to remote and hybrid work models now uh what kind of digital adoption are we observing and is this going to be a game changer for business growth and sustainability tipanka because you know you may be like like you to parna saying you know senior executives have the luxury of going digital they have the infrastructure in place what about your vendors what about uh, uh, your far off customers um 
technology is enabling a lot for you what happens to the other people around the world absolutely <clears throat> in our format also they were saying we have 5 lakh retail channel partners spread across are all of them digital savvy answer is no is that the future definitely answer is yes and we have the technology answer to solve some of them the entire ordering process the reordering process the billing process we are all trying to bring that under a common software but the adoption is slow and and the differentiator that would happen will be the digital divide between your ecosystem the ecosystem that you operate and there are few ecosystem which inherently and I, that's the point i was making there was few, few ecosystem they were inherently stronger in digital literacy uh, all through whereas some of us where we operate manufacturing service retail distribution were inherently not so and hence it would take some time for us to come up the value chain and we had a digital liter literacy even within the organization uh, you had to give how to in fact even after one and a half hour half year any time you have a zoom meeting there will be one bugging that happens and somebody has to be told that this is how you need to make sure that your camera is visible or whatever so that's one part and the second part is how do you use uh, ai and machine learning to to kind of automate some of the work that so far you had been working using without it and we had been a big adopters fmcg industry has been a big adopters in doing certain very core activity around supply chain and manufacturing uh, mm -hmm. through ai tools and that would keep us in good state but it would take time for the entire ecosystem to adopt it would be a journey for sure right anisha what is the uh, journey being like for you uh, because uh, like uh, the bank of mentioned supply chain ai ml um in your ecosystem how how many people are digitally on board how easy or difficult is it for you to stay on the hype course uh, anisha the journey for digital digital transformation had already started in sipla uh, before mm -hmm. the pandemic had begun and luckily for us mm -hmm. that really helped us uh, uh, in the initial stage and uh, uh, you know in sipla again uh, the digital initiative or a digital goal is been set by the top management and uh, it has uh, always moved from down to uh, from up to down so that uh, you know the adaptability is very high and um, you also have to understand that uh, being a pharma pharma industry we were very much uh, you know a target for cyber attacks and uh, things mm -hmm. like that so we had to be like by it was there was no choice for us but to be independent and be ag agile and proactive in our uh, you know it footprints and uh, that was the case uh, for sipla so uh, our journey had started early it was adapted by uh, all the uh, you know stakeholders uh, including employees uh, in the very initial stage and i remember uh, the day when we were supposed to be going for a lockdown it's around 16th of march last uh, 2020 uh, on that day you know it was uh, all the people who were having a laptop were uh, you know were given a uh, mandate to get their uh, laptop installed with a teams uh, uh, you know teams um, uh, application so uh, that uh, you know you can be in touch with your teammates you can be in touch with all the uh, other uh, you know other stakeholders and other uh, colleagues uh, on teams on a regular basis and that was and believe me teams was used not only for our business purpose but it was used for even engagement purpose which is why i think you know uh, our uh, journey in it uh, space was a smooth one and uh, it was a very important journey that we had uh, alongside the it uh, you know digital improvements so most of the uh, digital improvisation happened uh, in this last two years and the journey so far has been very very important and uh, very and there is a lot of capital investment has been done uh, mm -hmm. in um, in uh, digital uh, transformation so uh, for us right. this has been a very good uh, initiative all right so i just want to tell everybody on this call that we are soon to be running a live poll so keep your eyes peeled to the screen and give us your honest feedback 
Now, uh, Ritu Parnav, is most organizations shift to the new way of work, uh, the hybrid work model? Uh, how are companies reimagining people, processes, and technology? How are organizations preparing their workforce for the hybrid future? Because you you've spoken about many issues. You know, it isn't just about having the technology in place, having the infrastructure in place. Uh, there are people issues. Uh, there is engagement. There is productivity. So, how are organizations preparing themselves, their workforces? Wow. I mean, you can write a thesis on that. But I'll try and crunch it as much as possible from where I stand. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's very important for organizations to equip their employee base to be able to handle the complexity that has now risen in our workplaces. Um, and which means that there needs to be, if for organizations who are investing in remote work, there has to be very transparent mechanism of measuring productivity and performance, for example, which means there are significant amount of investments have to be done around that. Uh, side by side, organizations have to look at uh, what are the ways and means that you can improve productivity through automation, digitalization. You know, often I'm asked this question that when is it that India Inc. will start hiring uh, at pre-pandemic level? The answer to that is never. Because uh, even when COVID is behind us, organizations have unlocked and witnessed ways and means through which they have been able to improve productivity, which they've never, ever seen before. And hence, I don't think they're going to hire at the same level across job roles. However, new job roles will create it. And that's an opportunity from the employment market. So productivity and, um, um, and improving internal productivity of organization is one area. Uh, and that would be a huge aid for employees. The second, of course, is that how easy can we make it to kind of talk, collaborate uh, with each other? Uh, because some people are physically sitting in offices, some people are remotely in offices. How seamless can we make it? So I think there is a huge investments that need to be done in easy to use um, and extremely interactive collaborations uh, and engagement tools. The th third element, which has become very obvious to everyone, is that um, there is a significant need of keeping tap of the uh, skill improvement and upgradations and um, for the employees to understand and assess where do they stand today, uh, keep them aligned with the future. Because um, I think one of the things that has pandemic has uh, clearly showcased to us that. The innovations that we were looking at in 2030 has been pre to 2020, 2021 when it comes to learning uh, and development and how can that be leveraged. So again, if you're not investing in that element uh, for employees, for example, the most biggest anguish for LND folks have been that I organize classroom sessions for training, but nobody shows up or very few people are showing up. Now with the new kind, new revolution in ed, ed techs. So I think the kind of tools that are being available, it's flexible, it's modular. It, it, it understands the difference in learning patterns of every individual separately. So that's one area. And thirdly, of course, you need to get much more secured around your data because like Anisha was mentioning about the um, hugely during pandemic organizations got uh, exposed to different kinds of cyber hacks um, mm -hmm. and, and issues around that. So I think, and people are working remotely, so loss of data is always imminent. So how do you protect yourself? Overarchingly, the way I look at it, already there is a lot of innovation that is going on. And if some of those materialize, and the one that I'm particularly excited about is Metaverse, uh, the challenges of not feeling that I'm part of something uh, can be actually done away with some of the cool stuff like holograms and the kind of avatars that you can create where for, for example all four of us today are in two, four different places but the future is such that we will all each one of us would feel that we are in one room and i think some of those innovations will actually help employees to also invest in the social capital bit as well as be able to work from wherever they are but the, this is these are the cool stuff that are happening and i hope employees and employers together will stand to benefit from them. All right, so um, I, I'm going to come to the other two speakers about how they're prepping as well. But let's quickly run the poll uh, because we have a lot of people on this call and let's just uh, quickly check 
uh, what is uh, their feel of uh, the model which is going to be perhaps most productive uh, for their companies. Uh, so this is the poll, which model is the more uh, is more productive for you? The choices are 100% work from office, 100% work from home, three days work from office, two days work from home, two days uh, work from office, three days work from home or any other. So, uh, okay, panelists don't have a choice to uh, uh, put in their vote, but everybody else, please put in your vote so that we can um, get a pulse of what everybody thinks on what's a productive model uh, for, uh, you know, different companies in uh, yeah, in India. They are, they are without conditions, right? <laughs> uh, all uh, uh, conditions uh, do apply, but uh, those aren't mentioned. This is just a feel of what uh, people think works best for their company. So, uh, please do put in your um, your feedback, uh, pick your choice uh, so that uh, uh, we have this poll uh, where uh, we come to know uh, 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 what works best. So, please do put in your um, your uh, your uh, feedback and uh, quickly the Pankar, uh, how are you preparing for uh, your workforce uh, for what lies ahead? Ritu Parna has spoken about very important things uh, like productivity, like skill development uh, and of course um, being connected. So what are you doing to be uh, get your workforce ready for tomorrow? Yeah, so I would I would start with I think the first thing that we are trying to adopt and that we have realized is location or geographical proximity for talent in the next two three years would be very important the kind of world we were setting into in 2019 and we stand in 2021 people would have more proximity towards being closer to the family and that's one aspect that we are really focusing on when we are switching talent, hiring talent, buying or making. Second is the need for, for succession planning and not in all level you do succession planning, but need to create buffers because the world would be vulnerable and hence the talent management piece would go for a, for a significant change from the way that we have, we have considered so far. So, overlapping organizational designs is something orbit structure instead of pyramid structure would be something that we are looking at where you play as a team and not play clearly around an hierarchy and a pyramid that would be a very important thing and, and hence the skill development has to be always around your current skill your potential roles and your periphery roles so those are the three buckets of periphery roles, current skills and potential roles. That's where skill development will happen, where managers would probably identify or, or, or supervisors would identify what are those essential peripheral and um, buffer skills that he need to imbibe in addition to the current role that he, that he needs. And that would be a paradigm shift in the way capability development is being used. And the, and the last would be obviously communicating will remain a, a key. I think the last two years has also made human resource team be not so faceted about process orientation and creating platforms, but being closer to people and listening more and, and mm -hmm. reacting to listening. I think that's the third edifice that we are already working on. All right, let's quickly take you through the uh, results of the poll. Uh, so majority feels that three days of work uh, from office and two days work from home is uh, the most productive option for them. Uh, let's uh, quickly also take you through a similar poll that we conducted uh, on LinkedIn uh, just about three weeks back. Uh, similar alignment, but I think there uh, uh, people were of the view that uh, working three days from home is the most productive way to go forward. Uh, if you can just have a look at the LinkedIn poll and what that threw up as well. I guess that was three days uh, work from home and two days in office was perhaps the most productive. So we, we kind of close and I think uh, everybody, uh, each company will figure out something that works best for them. Uh, but it is uh, what most companies are looking at is a mix of working from home and uh, working from office. Now, uh, Anisha, um, you know, um, 
The Parker has spoken about uh, learning and development and uh, you know, the importance of communication amongst employees. Now, how will employee productivity be measured in these hybrid uh, work models? Will organizations ensure a smooth employee engagement and employee productivity in a remote setting uh, without hampering collaboration and coordination efficiency? Because, you know, we're hearing a lot about burnout and uh, uh, we also hear some instances of people being disengaged, something that even uh, Ritu Parna spoke about, especially those who are hired in the teams, uh, digital process and really haven't connected with the teams physically. So, uh, Anisha, I have a three point, uh, you know, to make over here. I have really, uh, you know, first of all, uh, I completely uh, agree with what Dipankar mentioned on uh, talent management and all that uh, stuff. And in addition to that, when you want to uh, kind of continue with, uh, you want to continue to have a engaged employee, you would have to be uh, proactive. And that is what supply is planning to do, or rather supply is doing currently. Uh, we are, uh, you know, on a, uh, it is a mandate again by the top management that we have to be keeping our culture alive because uh, Sipla has a unique culture of uh, caring for life as I always say and uh, uh, you know that has to be uh, percolated to all the employees whether they have been uh, uh, old employees like me or the employees who are onboarded and that is first thing that they are being made aware of that this is the culture or the, this is the legacy that Sipla has and we need to continue with that legacy for a longer time and that is the first point that uh, our companies uh, do well and I, I suppose that Ritupana mentioned about you know employee burnout and uh, people uh, not having uh, uh, enough of uh, you know uh, the the line between the work and the home has have really blurred uh, over a period of uh, two years and that needs to be kind of uh, amended so we are uh, initiating certain programs on uh, learning as well as uh, you know keeping people uh, engaged on other than professional activities so that uh, uh, there is not a, a case of burnout for us and the third one is that uh, you know continue to uh, tell them that you know they are being cared for and uh, you know they'll be looked after and of course uh, there are appropriate goals that have been defined for them so that uh, you know everybody works in that uh, tandem and uh, uh, the organization as an organization we achieve a goal that has been uh, decided upon so these are the things that uh, we generally we have uh, uh, we have charted out for our employees so uh, ritu parna uh, earlier in earlier on you said that you know companies have seen the productivity is improved but uh, when I you know, uh, compare notes with my friends, they're like, we're working all the time. You know? I, I'm at home, I don't have time with my kids because I'm working all the time. So um, measuring productivity, setting targets uh, uh, in this hybrid, hybrid work uh, environment, does it cut both ways? How do you manage productivity and avoid burnout? Um, of, I mean, look, if you're sitting at home and working all through the day because of lockdown, because you can't go anywhere, eat out, uh, meet friends, uh, the net output will obviously improve. But the question is about sustainability of that. And I think it's uh, it's better to not prematurely celebrate that productivity improvement and see how much of that improvement can be sustained. When I say productivity improvement, what I meant actually is that the, uh, the, if, a, if a certain ta activity we're taking, let's say 10 minutes to do, I think there are different innovations around us, which is trying to crunch that, time, which means mm. it's probably going to take two minutes or three minutes to do the same thing. So in a very simplistic manner, that's the improvement I'm talking about. So um, I personally, I mean, given the conversation that you're currently having, I think uh, the goalpost on productivity or measuring is hasn't changed. Finally, it's about performance. It's not about effort. It's uh, you can even if you are working for 18 hours um, in front of your laptop in front at home, but if it is not the corresponding output is not in accordance with the goals that have been set out, it, it's of no use to be honest. So I guess the 
for organization the measure of uh, productivity or measure of performance that goal post hasn't really changed what has changed is that how you are now getting about executing uh, the expectations that are there from you from workplace mm -hmm. uh, yes i think there are again there's a lot of innovations that are coming about in terms of being much more transparent in measuring that uh, productivity and in a way if i may if i may kind of stretch this conversation to a different angle um i think because you're not able to supervise and see the performance of your employees if that matters i think the emergence of the gig workforce is on account of that the fact mm -hmm. that uh in that organization um um if i may say so have very little responsibility in terms of how you go about doing your job you've been given a task are you executing it or not and the organization is more than willing to kind of compensate it for you so if we are already seeing some of these trends it's essentially a indicator about how the world is transforming in terms of measuring performance and output uh we come to us the close and we have a couple of questions coming so One last question to the panelists, uh, and uh, I'll request you to be brief, uh, Dipankar. How will workplaces, uh, workplace real estate change as a consequence of this hybrid work model? Um, uh, will will you not have large office spaces? Will it be more of co-working spaces? Um, how do you think this is going to work out? The the workplace real estate. Oh, I think I think there would be a cascading effect. As I sit in Mumbai, in the busiest business district. i can really see a lot of free offices my office is in seventh floor and two floors as i go up had been closed for the last one year i am seeing and clearly the commercial rates have gone down there is a doomsday scenario two things would happen uh if if we are really going for a three day work work from home particularly in the context of mumbai why do you then need to stay in the city you can go out in the suburb uh and drive all the way two days or three days a week which is absolutely doable which means the city would expand which today is not possible uh and that's a big change in real estate per se and you would see see cities freeing up second is obviously this large glass edifice big buildings will go for a change i think residential houses will become bigger you would have rooms for everybody whereas office will shrink and that's clearly a trend that's coming and people who are, companies who have big, bought big offices complexes already are looking for changes around that happening in mumbai for sure which is the real estate hotbed i see lot of changes around that recalibration we work i am not very sure because yeah, the, that's more for the gig and for the not so permanent one but for established business house relooking at the real estate footprint is definitely on the unwill for sure all right um uh, anisha we received a question uh, from the anonymous sendee and rituparna also spoke about you know uh, the gig economy so a large and the question is a large number of jobs currently in the gig or temporary economy require no special skills or knowledge do you think that there will be more uh, skilled or specialized roles but will also move to these kind of models the gig model Yes, I think I do agree uh, that it would uh, it would be on rise because uh, uh, most of the uh, organization. I would give a little different kind of an answer on this uh, because uh, I feel every organization is uh, on a re-imagination mode, and uh, mm. the boundary lines or the profile of work is changing. and that may require a different kind of a setup altogether or the skills and uh, for those kind of uh, profiles you need a different kind of a structure that would evolve and i don't think it has evolved as of now it is on rise and it would take some time before it we get a clear picture of uh, what is going to happen in that, that particular space so that is my limited uh, uh, understanding or my answer it is going to be very limited uh, to that extent so right. i am not yet very sure of mm. what is going to happen because it is evolving and i mm. i think it would evolve for uh, better and it could be it it could be evolving in a years time or two years time we don't know. 
All right. So another question coming in is uh, it's not a question actually. It's a statement from Gladstone Samuel. He's saying that holistic wellness will replace work-life balance over a period of time. It means designing work for well-being. Uh, he's also saying the uh, the VUCA environment is making organization focus on ethical renovation that creates and sustains the high performance work uh, culture at work. Now, Ditu, what do you feel about this? Because you know, uh, globally, uh, we're seeing this uh, big quit happening. People are, uh, you know, giving up on their jobs, even though the uh, in in markets like the US, you know, their uh, their uh, employment insurance is running out, but they don't want to go back to work because they don't see the flexibility of the organization. So, how important is it to design your workplace for well-being? I have to keep reminding: we live in India. Our reality. <laughs> India are very different from what's happening in UK and US. UK and mm-hmm. US, they have run huge debts and rolled out uh, personal subsidies for unemployment loss, uh, for em- employment loss, um, and God knows what else. They're rich countries; they can afford to do all of that. But uh, and that's the reason some individuals in there, these countries, have gotten so used to that idea of these dole outs that they don't want to go back. They prefer remaining unemployed than being employed. Um, but I don't think India can afford those elegance. India uh, is not a rich country. Um, I think we should remind ourselves: large part of this country is still poor. And the best possible way for us to look after the well-being of individuals is to give them a job, a job of dignity. Uh, that's where India starts from, right? I think mm. if I have to show empathy, I will show empathy to the, you know, millions of youth in this country who are right now unemployed. So I think mm. I will prioritize their well-being, and in my mind, their well-being is to be able to find a dignified, formal, decent job. Uh, today and I think that's going to be India's reality for the next decade. So, yes, there are issues which are being faced by a certain minority in different organizations in terms of um, flexibility, in terms of uh, mental health, depression. All of them are important, and I'm not undermining them. But for me, the agony of an individual who can't feed two meals to mm. their children. Or themselves uh, is is at, at the moment taking priority. So India has to first solve the quantity problem hmm. before we pick up the quality problem. All right. Uh, one uh, another question that is coming from anonymous attendee is that uh, there is an increasing tendency for people to socialize and communicate via digital platform rather than real life uh, contact. This can easily lead to a sense of disconnect and isolation. How should companies respond to mitigate such challenges? Tipankar, would you like to take this? Uh, uh, so, twenty years back, when uh, laptops and computers came in office places, uh, we thought of office as a place for our digital hangout. I, I remember playing my first online rummy in a site called India.com on the day of Diwali in the evening. Uh, and, and, and you come to experience computers and laptops in the office. Two, a day to day when office IT and office infrastructure is actually lagging behind the kind of digital experience we get outside office. Our, our office computer infrastructure can never recreate the experience of a Facebook or an Insta, right? So I think here, expecting organizations to do something where socially we are becoming what we call as fobbing where you talk with lap in a mobile mobiles even when we are sitting with your family members uh, is something that for organizations would be very difficult to do we will continue to have uh, offline programs offline seminars but i think that's a big digital difference that's happening with the with the generation and across ages um, that is something which I do not know for sure as of now how much organizations can really make a change if we don't as a society realize that we are probably becoming a more digital generation than a flesh and blood generation which in my mind is pretty alarming. Uh, Anisha, your last word on this, uh, you know, because we are saying that large offices perhaps will not happen but then where do employees meet? Or will you have a space for this engagement or will you continue to engage digitally? 
uh, I am little loss of uh, words over here because I feel uh, you know I'm still uh, old uh, time uh, you know personally I feel uh, you know in person uh, social engagement is more effective and productive uh, yes. even if it is done uh, you know uh, on a very uh, at an appropriate duration then on a social uh, on a digital platform because uh, digital platform doesn't give you that kind of a look and a feel that you get it when you are with your colleagues you are with your uh, you know uh, with uh, the uh, other uh, people uh, in office so even if it is a tea break you know 10 minutes tea break or a 15 minute tea break in person that uh, serves as a uh, you know better uh, a motivation or a better uh, effect it has a better effect than uh, having that digitally so uh, we we are uh, i think uh, all the organizations are also trying to uh, do a, a, a you know permutation combination of uh, these uh, two initiatives and uh, uh, maybe you know we'll get a better p- picture uh, going forward but i i still feel p- traditional way of uh, uh, in person uh, uh, social engagement is uh, better all right and i guess companies will plan for some of that along with the digital interface that they have with their employees uh, uh, and their different stakeholders dipankar anisha rituparna thank you all for joining us and uh, sharing with us you. uh, your thoughts and wisdom about what the future of workplaces will look like thank you all for joining us uh, pleasure uh, to have you with us uh, and uh, i thank you everyone who's logged on to this call uh, for joining us on this session to crystal gaze into the workplaces of the future. A uh, special thank you to our speakers who are taking the time out of their packed schedules to share their experience and wisdom with everyone. We shall be back with more brainstorming sessions on workplace trends for the future. You can join us again. Till then, goodbye and stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.